Before we get started, I wanted to say a special thank you to today's sponsor, Sam Ash Music. If you play music in Las Vegas, you know Sam Ash. You can pick up microphones, percussion, guitars, pianos, all sorts of musical instruments. They also have lessons and special uh, performances on their stage. It, it's overall a great place to go. You should definitely check them out. And um, tell them Josh sent you from Room 6. More importantly, click the link down in the description. It'll take you to their online website. It will help the channel out. I appreciate it. I know you'll appreciate it. Thank you, Sam Ash, for sponsoring today's video. And uh, thank you for watching. So let's go. But we made this guy stop his karaoke like three times. And people are like, get them off the stage. And we're up there and we sing our song. We sing our heart out. We walk off the stage and he looks at me and goes, I thought we sounded great. And I said, so did I. Yeah, we, it's I love, Vegas, I baby. Love that you were, you, it's Vegas. I love that you were booed at karaoke. Yes. <laughs> If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share. And uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today is a very special interview, a very special episode for me, because we are celebrating my 100th subscriber, which happens to be my interview as well. And my first touring musician that I'm interviewing. Oh, I'm the first one. Pamela Hello. Jean, everybody. Say hi. Hi, everyone. Yay. Shall we celebrate? Let's celebrate. One, two, three. If we can open. Yay! Hey! I found him to be on the show and he said <laughs> your water i know i said i was gonna move my water oh it's in my whiskey no 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 not the whiskey now it's gold schlager <laughs> whiskey wasted whiskey wasted all right. yes first of all i have to give proper shout out to uh steven at party city because they uh they hooked me up he, he helped me find exactly what i needed for this and exactly what i needed for these and uh that is a substantial amount of confetti do i have confetti in my hand no, I think you're good. Okay. Do I have any in my hand? No, you're good. Okay, good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we're good. Welcome to my home. I thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank I you. did not, you know, let him know earlier, but he is going to do some whiskey as a tradition. Yeah, there you go. She's driving to the gig. And she's driving an RV, so we don't want her drinking. A big RV. Yeah, right. Yes. So, um, a little back background for those for for whatever reason, if someone's watching, they don't know you. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks for subscribe. tuning in. Yes, please, subscribe. <laughs> um, Nashville recording artist. The homegrown artist on San Diego's KPRI 102.1. And uh, they have a good homegrown scene there. They do. Yes. I uh, was just there like for here. eight years, and it was yep. excellent. I also know that you were um, on a New York emerging artist, or yes. WNYR. Yep. And uh, you've opened for the Little River Band, Devin Wade Band, the good old boys. And you've got... Uh, Two original EPs, one of which is here. Yes. And this is a lovely, I, I like the picture actually. Thank you. Searching for Utopia. There'll be a pretty picture on the screen. My friend Frankie yep. took that in San Diego. Nice. Mm -hmm. She's uh, got two music videos out of this uh, currently on YouTube. One is Gemini's, one word, and one is Falling. The Falling is the newest one. I'll put a link down in the description. Also. And let's not forget K102 because they are my current country station that is uh, playing, yes, yes, yes. playing my music, interviewing me before the tours. Yep. Um, and I love them. Derek yep. and Jeff, they're my main radio guys. Uh, uh -huh. We'll get into this a little bit later, but you're also a published photojournalist mm -hmm. and print model. And in fact, she has a Facebook store online, link will be down in the description, where a lot of it is modeled by you, such as this. And, um, you are no stranger to the road, that's for sure. This is not your first <laughs> tour. Currently on your four legs tour, and um, yeah, 
Thank you so much for being my 100 yeah, subscriber. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes. Let me tell you, it was very comforting to come to a strange man's house that I met off the internet while his wife and daughter were selling Girl Scout cookies on the front street when I pulled up. I was like, That's how we do it. We're not going missing today. Right. So, um, is this, how long ago did this come out? That was 2012 that I recorded in Nashville, and I will be back in Nashville at some point this year, recording it with the same musicians and the same producer see, to do four more songs. See, see, see. All right. Wait a minute. Something's wrong. Uh-oh. Movie magic. So she's got some merch that she brought. She also has tank tops, and uh, she has... Hoodies, long sleeve zip-ups. Hats. Check out the hats, check out the hats. <laughs> glitter, which apparently doesn't come off. So uh, Yeah, you can wash these shirts lots and lots of times and the glitter will not come off. It's yeah. high quality glitter. So got... I do have men's stuff too with the whiskey wasted that's not glitter unless right. men like glitter, that's Spe fine. Speaking of whiskey wasted, we have, she has whiskey gl wasted glasses. Which goes with the hat. Which goes with any kind of beverage you like. Just don't put the cups in the dishwasher. Right. I'll try this because it doesn't want to sit normally. <laughs> Coozies! And of course, the always ubiquitous autographed poster. Autographed poster. I like that uh, with the uh, wrapped around microphone cord. Thank you. My nice. friend Marcy did those photos. Very nice. Very nice. I have a lot of great photographer friends. We yeah. trade. We trade lots of stuff. <laughs> if I can suggest one thing. Yes. Maybe add your social media thing somewhere. Yes. Yeah. That I have more. Posters. Actually, all you have to do. Is... I have more without them. Yeah. Or with them. Uh, as I say, all you have to do really is just, if, if it's all the same across the board, just like at symbol, you know, yeah. whatever it is. So. Yeah, because I got the website there. Cool. Yeah. Cool means. Um, here we go. <laughs> oh, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that the cheese, the, the cheese and the, the glitz is, oh, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this, your kitchen's a disaster now. Oh, you should say it this morning. The Everything whole, was clean before I got here. Everything's the whole, always clean. The whole clean reason I, I do these things is because it forces me to clean. Oh. <laughs> Quite frankly. No, I, I, I like to say I don't have the time, the wallet, or the liver to go out and see all the musicians I know and, and I want to go see. Yeah. I just, I can't. I know. I'm a dad. I have a full-time day job. I do this. And so it's... Um, I, I wish. I wish I... Every time somebody posts, I, you know, if, if you're a musician that's been on the show or that knows me... And you're like, hey, man, come see me play. And I say, no, it's not because I'm just tired and I, I can't make it. It's literally because I got five other things going on, and I'm sorry. In the meantime, getting back to my job. From here, you're going straight to Lake Mead uh, Marina to perform. Yeah. Unfortunately, that, that show will be over by the time this video gets uh, done yeah, and posted. Yeah, that one is in like two hours, right, right after the interview. What do we have happening next week? So next week... This is the Formal Legs Tour in my new RV that I bought myself, so I'm not traveling in a 20-year-old Toyota Corolla. Again. So, again, yeah, for, you know, 800 million miles. Um, I'm in Yuma for a week, and then Tucson for a night, and then I've got three gigs in Phoenix, mm. and then I'm back off to North Idaho, and then I've got gigs in Idaho and uh, Spokane area, starting right back as soon as I get back. Cool. So definitely um, keep an eye out for this video, and... Uh... There'll be links in the description where you can check her out and follow along and she'll say, I'm here and I'm here. And share. Please exactly. Share. Please share. I'm an independent musician. I do all this on my own. So share away if you like the music. That's right. In fact, self-funded is one of the things I was going to talk to you about because <laughs> it is, it's hard out here. It's, it's, it's it, that's a hard life. Yeah. Um, now four more legs is, is because now you have two dogs with you on this tour. Yes. The last several tours I've been doing, uh, my dog, Bella, who's in all my music videos, she's my head of security and my road <laughs> dog. And we did just adopt another dog around Christmas time. And uh, his name is Caesar. And they have their own matching bandanas on today, too. And I named the tour after a song I started writing recently called Four More Legs. And it's about having another dog. And... Um, yeah, it's me and the two dogs driving across the country in an RV. Sounds like a one-sided uh, conversation there. <laughs> <laughs> and now that's, I wanted to ask how, um, how does this tour compare with the Pedal to the Metal tour? So the Pedal to the Metal tour started three years ago when I up and left an abusive relationship overnight out of Northern California in a U-Haul with my dog. And my dad gave me his credit card, said I want you out of that town tonight. Because I wasn't safe anymore. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. We love you. And I literally got into this huge U-Haul that was towing my car. And we just 
me and the dog, we drove to North Idaho and started a new life overnight. And I decided to dedicate my whole life to doing my music and touring, raising the voice of awareness for domestic violence. That's what this purple heart is around my neck. And I donate 10% of everything I make through all my tours, all my merch sales, CD sales to a women's shelter in North Idaho to help other women and children get out of that situation. That's actually really awesome. And I know that that's a huge problem across the world, really. Mm -hmm. But um, it's uh, we're, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that in the description. So if you want to donate or you know anybody who's in that situation, or if you're in that situation, definitely click that link. Yep. They can help and you. Call the 1-800 numbers to your <clears throat> local women's shelters. They will help you with anything, anything. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, and if you're if you're listening and you aren't sure, the answer is probably yes. Right. <laughs> um, if you're scared, call a women's shelter. If you're scared to get your stuff out of your house, call a police officer. Get your stuff, and stuff is only stuff. I will tell you, I left all my dishes behind. I left, um, you know, rollerblades, lawn chairs, things like I got my personal stuff that I wanted out, right. and there was a bunch of stuff that it wasn't worth going back and it's getting thrown into a wall for. Yeah. So, you know, get the meaningful stuff out while that person's at work, and then go buy new dishes like I just bought for my new RV that my current lovely man that is not abusive. Um, helped me get co-signed for this RV so I could live my biggest dream of traveling in my RV. So thank you, Mike. Love you. Don't screw it up, Mike. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, got no, you. No, now, is Mike on this tour with you? No, he was supposed to come with. Mm. Um, yeah, but he's getting a full knee replacement. Ooh. He used to be an okay. MMA fighter. and You, 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 you get yeah. a pass. <laughs> yeah, he gets, he, gets a, he gets a big pass because he's very bummed. He was supposed to fly into Vegas, and I was supposed to pick him up from the airport, and he was supposed to enjoy three weeks in the Arizona sun with me, and he's back working. Which his knee probably out. would love. That, that dry heat, his name would probably love. Yeah, so now instead of getting a minor surgery and being with me, we're waiting and doing the big surgery right when I get back. So well, I'm a Rooney. Yeah. Oh, well. So he's, he's off the hook on why he's not here. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, you got the dogs. Yeah, I got the dogs, so, yes. <laughs> all right. Um, now, what what's one thing you would tell yourself, oh my God. hey, this is what's going to happen when you go on tour in an RV with two dogs? <laughs> I think I told myself everything that I needed to know. I needed to be patient mm -hmm. with not only the dogs, but the RV and myself. Right. Um, so it was a learning process this whole week. Nothing has went as planned. I've had somebody steal my battery out of my own driveway, out of the RV. Um, wait, wait, wait. They stole the car battery out of the, the battery that's in front of the thing. Well, if you have an RV, I'm sure you have it chained down. If you don't, I don't believe people steal things right out of your driveway, but they do. So um, apparently, yeah. That's... So that was day one, and then the fuse was broken that was syncing up for my brake control. So my boyfriend oh. had to redo all that for me and redo a fuse. I didn't get on the road till two o'clock on Monday, which I wanted to be on the road at like you know nine. Yeah. And then um, I was told by somebody to bungee my awning cord, you know, the extra mm. awning down. I did not do that. I was planning on doing that when I got to where I was going, and I have somebody beeping their horn at me on the side of the highway with a sign in the window that says, you're awning, pull over. I pull over. It's like 40 mile an hour winds in North Idaho, and this family was nice and stopped, and the guy helped me bungee my awning. Oh, so it was still on. <laughs> it was still on, but it was blowing down Highway 95, um, and then, yeah, you have to learn how to hook up all your hookups, and I've had people show me how to use all the, you know... Empty in your sewer, your gray water. Mm -hmm. and, and then today I had, this is why I was late for this interview. It took me 40 minutes to reattach my vehicle of the sway bars and the brake mm -hmm. control and the weight distribution. So I'm out there trying to do this myself. And I'm realizing on this tour that I do not have a lot of hand strength. So driving around the country with an RV, you must make sure your hands are strong and mine apparently aren't as strong as I thought. They're not as strong as my will to survive out oh, yeah. there on the road. Yeah. So you want to go on tour, huh? Yeah, so you want to go on tour. No, just just think about it. You're going to look back and laugh at all this stuff. Oh, I'm already laughing. Oh, well, there it's you go. It's great. It's better than traveling in a car, though, I will tell you, because I don't yeah. have to unpack my car <laughs> in the cooler every night. I literally get where I'm going. I put in a few cords into my RV, I crawl in, and we're home. 
you know, so it's got a yep. lot of benefits to it. Like it's Definitely. comfortable. The dogs are comfortable. They're happy. And that's honestly, that's important, especially because they're your companions. They're your only companions. They are my <laughs> heads of security. They yes. do not let people get near me. So it's, um, they're great. Well, I'm glad you didn't bring them aside for the interview. Thank you. Right. <laughs> They're going to make their way on to the interview at some point, somehow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get some B-roll. Um, now, you've changed your image a little bit over the years. Just, I think part of that is just as you, you know, yeah. as years pass. Um, any regrets or anything that you're like, I wish I hadn't had that look or done this thing or no. whatever? No? No. Good. Good. And I still don't regret it. I was thinking, should I wear a neon green hair thing today? And then when I realized I have no hairspray in the RV or my little hair oils that I use, um, I just, I let it, I let it blow dry in the desert. It's technically summer for me because I'm outside in shorts and a tank top. And I said, why not wear neon green hair? Let the freak flag fly. All right. I don't care. (laughs) Now, you once posted, if you happened to stepped in shit, got your boots dirty, had your hair ratty, Fed the cows, yelled at your dog to get away from the electric fence, played your guitar to animals, then you ain't country. I did post that on um, um, the road trip home. Mm -hmm. Uh Is this still true with today's crop of country stars? Do you want me to get real on what's really country these days? I doubt any of them are country. (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're not. But where do you where do you see the future of country music going and western? Okay, fake country accents when you're singing. I'm allowed to swear on here, so to my young viewers, sorry, it's complete shit. If you don't really have an accent and you're not really from down south, do not put fake hillbilly accents in your music. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. It sounds absolutely god-awful. I'm from Minnesota originally. I do not sing with a southern accent. I do not sing with a, you know, twang. It's it's me singing how I sing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why everybody's putting fake twang. Um, talking about chewing your dip in your lip, disgusting. Girls don't want to hear about that unless you're one of those girls that chew. That's cool. That's your thing. Guys, guys don't want to hear about it. I don't know who they're writing that for. It's I like, don't either. Oh, really? And Thanks. I, I don't want to see you smile. <laughs> I will tell you, Ashley McBride, Maren Morris, those two are definitely two of my ultimate favorite that are on country radio right now. Mm-hmm. They write. They're talented. They have a great voice. They play. You know, so there, it's not all crap that's on the radio, right. but I, there, I do listen to stuff some days where I'm like, how do I put so much thought and heart and soul into writing something like Falling or Gemini's or Small Country Town or any song that's on that album that I have really put heart and soul into and somebody's singing about why we drank, mm-hmm. not drink, why I would drink, or okay? Pers- Fake or, country or, or a, uh, a plastic cup we drink out of. Hmm? Yes, yes. We're not naming artists. We're just naming random parts of songs that I really just don't get <laughs> how tra- it's how it's making radio waves. It drives me crazy. Yeah. And oh, I will tell me. you, I have ran open mics in San Diego for many years, and there are so many talented artists mm-hmm. out there in the world that are not on the radio that should yep. should be on the radio. I, I've I've run many of the open mics mm-hmm. as well here in town, and and. You're just like, and you just, you're just here for fun. Uh, I, I like to do the same thing at karaoke. <laughs> I like to show, <laughs> I like to be the ringer and show up and just be like, all right, I'll get up and do a song. And then I do my song and everyone's like, wow, you should do that. I was like, well, yeah, but I can, do this. Can we mention a really fun karaoke story as long as we went down that road? By all means. That's how I started off was a karaoke dare, but. Since we're in Vegas, I, ha- I lived here for a year and a half. I have many good memories from this town and many, many sunrises I saw come up. Um, it was great. It was a great time here. And I'm glad I don't still live here because people drive way too fast here. Nobody here is enjoying their life. Everybody, if you're listening in Las Vegas, come to North Idaho for a week and unwind and breathe. And like, what do you think I live in Henderson? Yeah, I was at Red Rock yesterday. And people were doing 60 miles an hour in a 35 in a national park. Now, Slow down. Come on. You're yeah. in a national park to see stuff. Just if you want to go at 90, have, come back on have, you, have you been to, to Maui or to Hawaii? No. I, I, at, least, at least in Maui, because I've been there a couple times, um, they had, the uh, native cars yeah. have bumper stickers that say, Slow down, bra, this ain't the mainland. And literally, <laughs> the speed limit is like 25, yeah. 35 miles an hour. And then when you get like around the airport, it bumps up to like 55, but it's 
Yeah, like people take time to breathe. Don't be in a hurry to your own funeral. You'll yeah. get there. Um, also, the karaoke story. Just oh yeah, sorry. Cause, <laughs> just because we're in Vegas, my friend Chris and I, we we were roommates in San Diego, and we came out to Vegas for a weekend, and we put in our names to sing karaoke at one of the little karaoke bars on the Strip. Mm-hmm. Well, somehow it took them forever to get it started, and we're both like probably four drinks deep by the time they call our name, and both of us can As sing. You do. <laughs> They call us up. We're going to go sing some Johnny and June song. And they have the costumes you can put on. So we put costumes on. Oh, and we get up it. there. Oh. And we're like arm in arm. And we're singing. And somehow the ball on the karaoke machine oh, is no. not going with the music. And to this day, I'm not sure if it was the alcohol or the machine. But we made this guy stop his karaoke like three times. And people were like, get them off the stage. And we're up there, and we sing our song, we sing our heart out, and we walk off the stage, and he looks at me and goes, I thought we sounded great. And I said, so did I. Yeah, we, it's I love, Vegas, I baby. Love that you were, you, it's Vegas. I love that you were booed at karaoke. Yes. <laughs> That's how, the, I don't know what bar we were at, but they were very serious about their karaoke. Uh-huh. And we were having Oh, a there's really a couple here time. where you better bring your game, because <laughs> usually what happens is you'll you'll know, like, Oh, here's the instrument. Here's the instrumental part, and that's suddenly the song is over. Yeah. Oh, I guess we're done. Like you know, if you're if you're at all semi with it, you'll realize okay, he wants me off the stage now. Yeah. But no, there's <laughs> there's some places where you better bring it. Um. So moving on. Normally, because I, this is usually about local Las Vegas musicians, I say, how long have you been in Vegas? How long have you been in Nashville? I don't live in Nashville. I record in Nashville. Okay. So, but I lived in Vegas for a year and a half, and that was 15 years ago. All right. Where do you live now? Tennessee? North Idaho. Or you said that. I'm so yep. sorry. Yeah, no, no worries. Sorry. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in North Idaho, and I've been there for about three years. Now, how long have you been uh, doing music in just period? I've been, I played piano as a kid mm-hmm. for like six years, and then I was in choir, which I dreaded every minute of it because I was very shy. Everybody did. Uh, <laughs> then I got dared to sing karaoke at 18 years old at my senior all-night party. You weren't drunk at this one. Definitely not drunk at that one. <laughs> um, my friends may have been. I was not. Uh, and then I started singing, and then I started learning how to write, and then I didn't really pick up a guitar until about 10 years ago when I started running open mics. And now uh, the last six years, I've been playing a solo show all up and down California. And then when I moved to Idaho, I have toured um, like, I don't know, nine, eight, nine states in the last year. Just two tours now, right? There's been like four. There was one, there was one with the good old boys. They did a country to the city tour and I was their opening act. And that was in Northern California. That was super fun. Those guys are a riot if you ever get a chance to see them live. Um, then when I moved, let's see, up to Idaho, I did the pedal to the metal, which was, it's kind of an ongoing tour. Mm-hmm. When I'm playing local gigs, I just tell everyone it's the pedal to the metal tour because we don't stop, you know, mm-hmm. and it's to get people out of abusive relationships, follow your dreams. You know, it's kind of, there's more to it than just the music. Right. Um, and then we had the slip away tour, which was the other little EP I have. Uh, that was just like a three state thing. And then we've done... The big one last year, the Follow the Sun tour, that was 60 days out of the Toyota Corolla, five states, 18 cities, me and the dog. That's a long time. And um, it was probably one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And I'm, I came home with $1,000 after living out of my car for 60 days, staying with friends, family, oh. hotels. And that $1,000 went right to my Nashville fund. So I am saving for Nashville. It's not super cheap to record there, so it takes me a while as yeah. a self-funded artist. Especially country, though. That's that's where you want to record. Yeah, yeah. and that's where my producer works out of, and he's just yeah. he's phenomenal. Well, I know that there is a growing scene here uh, for country western. I don't know about the recording scene here, yeah. though. But maybe I'll get someone on who is part of that scene. Country's uh, taking over. Just stop doing the fake country accents, please. Now, um, where do you see country music going in the future? If it keeps going the way it's been going, it's, we're not going to have country music. But if music, you think but... about all the other genres of music, it all seems to happen where there's this period of just mus- musicians in the scene or just musicians in general, like, what the hell? And yeah. then it rebounds like suddenly yeah. there's a whole crop of new young people that are like no no no, this is how it should be i remember yeah, and, it was good and it's starting to do that again it's yeah. like i said there's there's these handful of artists 
uh, like Chris Stapleton. I mean, there's just, there's a couple, a handful of artists that you hear and you're like, oh, thank God. They sound, you know, like mm -hmm. you want it to sound authentic and real and storytelling, not we got drunk on yeah, Friday night because we got paid. I got paid yesterday yeah. too. Did I go out and get drunk? No, I sat in my RV yeah. and played flashlight tag with my dog. <laughs> As you do. That's what we do. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm the same way, uh, even hip hop. It's like, I miss hip hop where they told you a story. Yeah. Just tell me a story. Don't talk about how great you are or, you know, anyway. I digress. That's a whole other... There's other videos. Um, I hope... How long... Let's see. You started this tour February 21st? Yes. I, I had um, a radio interview on K102, mm -hmm. and then I played one gig in Idaho, and then we've been on the road for the last five days. Cool. So then I pick up tonight, and we're just boom, boom, boom for the next two weeks. Cool. Let's dig into you a little bit now. Early musical influences. What, what what was the music? In, what did you grow up listening to? Country. We grew up. My parents only listened to country, church music. My grandparents listened to old country. Patsy Cline was always on the record player when Crystal we were Gale, kids. Ken yeah, Rogers. like old yep. country, like real country, like what you're saying. We need to get back to yep. those roots. Um, so that's what I grew up on. I was not a fan of country, though. I loved 80s rock. I was well, a, sure, you grow up I on wanted it. You to grow up and be a rock star. And, you know, I always have a hair and a side ponytail and all the everything, the bangly bracelets. And I want to be a rock star. Sure. When I was 10, we went to a Garth Brooks concert. And I saw my parents. I'm like, I don't want to go see country. That's all we listen to, you know. Garth Brooks is a force of nature. He blew my mind mm -hmm. blew my mind it, I mean, he's flying from the ceiling and the fireworks are going yeah. off and my sister and i are like this is country and, and from that day on yeah. i can mix country and i, I, rock. Call, I like good. to call that uh country rock yeah because he's he's real they're, they're trying to bring that showmanship yeah they realize you know it gets boring just watching me play yeah. like there's there is a certain what's the word charm to watching like, you know, Waylon Jennings and, you yeah. know, Willie Nelson and all that. And yes, you're not going to expect to see them fly from the ceiling. No, no. But at the same time, y you got to make your mark and, and be, you know, and um, give people a show. Uh, Chris Isaac actually said, people pay money to, you know, people paid their hard-earned money to see it's The least we can do is dress up. Yes. And you've seen his outfits. I'm trying to think. I, I'm trying to think what he normally. One wear. word: rhinestones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the man. He he he. And he pulls it off. He pulls it off. Um. All right. What are your current musical influences? What are you listening to now that gets you kind of jazzed? Oh my god, you have no idea. Bring like, it. That's why we're. Here. I listen to everything. Like one minute, especially when I'm on the road by myself, because nobody tells me to change it. <laughs> I, one minute I will have Patsy Cline on, and I'm crying. Next minute, I got Lady Gaga on, and I'm singing at the top of my lungs, and my dog's in the back howling away because she sings with me. Um, I literally like everything. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it is lyrically awesome. Mm -hmm. That's number one for me. If your lyrics suck, I'm not listening to you. I well, will sure. not buy your album. You're a singer, me the, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a, like the songwriter. What for me is, I want your lyrics to hit me here. So that's right. what you know. I don't try to hit people with my lyrics. I write stuff that's from my heart, my soul, my experiences in life, and somehow every song I've written hits somebody at some point in some audience. But I do, I, I love everything. I love, you know, everything from Lady Gaga to Johnny Cash, Metallica, Ozzy, you know, everything. Yep. So. I, I, I like to say I, I, I like everything from Mozart to Metallica. Yes. Um, but even that, there's... There's offshoots of that where I'm kind of I kind of dig, but then the other pe the other acts surrounding that type of little subgenre, I'm like, eh, I just like this one. And what else I really like too? I like like listening to other local artists. Like if mm -hmm. you stumble, like when I tour, I see a lot of random people playing because you'll go to a fair or you'll go to a street fair or something, and you're just stop for an afternoon, and someone's sitting there playing their guitar, and you you know every once in a while you see one of them, and you're like. That person is amazing. How, like, what, how much money do I have? Yeah, and I, mean, I sit there, I'm like, somebody tipped me a hundred dollar bill last night. I can give this guy ten for his CD. You know? So I'm always doing the pay it forward, the giving on the road. If people right. are giving to me when I'm on the road, so I was like, I'll support all the local artists when I see your stuff or hear your stuff too. That's that's actually really cool. I, I remember this. Is, I'm gonna sound fancy. This is, <laughs> sitting at um, a French restaurant inside Paris. Hotel, uh, um, 
Paris Casino, you know. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it right now. I live here. Anyway, I know friend, I'm all in Las Vegas Strip eating, you know, in a French restaurant. And there's these two guys playing with a little amplifier. And they're amazing. And I don't remember what uh, style of music it was. I think it was Brazilian. Yeah. But it was just music like you don't expect to hear that anywhere really in, yeah. in Vegas. And they're, I'm just like, hey, honey, you got any money? Because <laughs> I, I was like, I, they deserve they deserve yeah. it. And it's kind of, getting back to social media real quick, it's kind of like, okay, this deserves an upvote. This deserves a like. You yes. Know? <laughs> you, yep. you deserve for me to buy that. <laughs> and uh, I've got it somewhere in my collection. Um, I need to do that, actually. I need to kind of bin dive on my own collection and start listening again to all the, the local stuff that I either traded my own CD with people or, or bought or was given. So, um, in my last car, I only had a tape player. So all these CDs <laughs> I've collected, mm -hmm. I'm finally getting a chance to listen to them while I'm driving across the country this time. So it's been nice. I've she got, got to you. She's getting to you. Yeah, I'll get to you. And as soon as I listen, I do send them a Facebook message and say, I loved your CD. Nice. You know? Yep. Now that my daughter is 12, she's not quite so enamored of, you know, hey, let's check it out. You met this person. Let's listen to their CD. Yeah. Now she's, she's like... YouTube. It's just, she doesn't watch my stuff, of course, <laughs> especially not the interviews. But uh, she, she, no, she she's listens to uh, this kind of stuff a twelve year old girl is listening to right now, yeah. which is fine. But then she also will surprise me sometimes. Uh, a song like um, "Bad Medicine" by Bon Jovi came on, and she was singing along. Oh, it's funny, when the, you... I have a stepdaughter that's 12, and the stuff that they would listen to, they would have some rap song, and they would know every word for it in the back seat, and they would be, mm -hmm. and I'd look in the rear view mirror, like, how do you kids know this? <laughs> my proudest moment as a parent. Hi, Addie, by the way. My proudest moment as a parent is when my daughter was like four or five, you just say, all right, stop. So I'm like, collaborate and listen. <laughs> yeah. Audrey's back with a friend. <laughs> 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 just like I did, I did, I did my job right. All right. Yep. <laughs> um, bringing the eighties back. Now, um, let's talk shows. What is your best or favorite show memory? Oh my! What's God. one that just sticks in your head? Whether it's really, really good, or I almost ended up in jail, or or one of those weird things. That's a tough one. That's that's a that's really really <laughs> tough one. Because there has been, there's just a handful of venues that, especially when I'm touring, mm -hmm. it's like playing for the first time every time. Sure. So 99% of the bars I play at while I'm on tour, people are, they sit, they listen, they tip, they come up afterward and buy merchandise and they shake your hand and they wish you well and they want to hear your story and, you know... It's great. It, it, is, maybe I need to go on tour instead of trying to play the same place every week. I am telling you, it is so much more fun touring, but you can't do it year-round. I mean, you can, but I uh, would look haggard by the time. Yeah. You know, this whole week has been crazy enough, you know? Yeah. But I'm. that's a really tough one. I would say, like, there's a venue, the 307 Bar Grill and Casino in Montana. Okay. People drove three to four hours to come see my one hour performance. And it was just you. You just weren't hoping for someone? No, just me and my wow. guitar. Um, I played a uh, Bub's dive bar in Oceanside, California. It was a drunken military bar. You gotta love any and place that it says was, we're a dive bar. It, yeah, it's Bub's dive bar. And I was just solo artist opening for a couple other bands that night that were not even my style of music. They were like heavy metal, but that's me and my guitar playing country music. Mm -hmm. And all these Marines were up by the stage holding each other's arms with their beer spilling all over the floor, singing every song with tears in their eyes. And I'm like, okay, this is why I do what I do. Right. Because I can go sing that same song tomorrow night at a different venue and nobody will even turn around. Yeah, they'll be, and, they'll be gaming. And, so, yeah, so there's just there's certain venues where people are, when they're actually into it and listening, it's just it just blows your mind. And you're just up there like, wow, these people are like, they're feeling yep. you, you don't you, you almost don't want to move to the next song just in case. Yeah, I'm like right. maybe we'll keep Simple Man going yeah. for the next seventeen oh, yeah. minutes. <laughs> I, I used to front a, a cover band here in town, best band name, Revolving Door. Yeah. We went through so many people. <laughs> but um people would be dancing and I would think, Oh hey, we're supposed to break you know, take it down a notch. Why don't we move instead let's move to Brown Eye Girl or whatever? Yeah. And I would tell them like Brown Eye Girl or Mustang Salad or whatever and we'd go. And suddenly they just drift off. You're like, what? You were dancing. You were having a good time. Yeah. We kept the beat. What the heck? So, yeah. But no, anytime you get, uh, definitely the military, they understand that feeling of, of 
that country kind of evoke. Yeah. Of, you know, I miss home, I miss, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And also just the word country and they're in the military, so. There's a couple of uh, shows I've done recently, too. I have a song called Here at Home, and it's about moving to Idaho with California license plates on your car, which doesn't go over nice. well. If you're from California and you go to Idaho, you don't think you're as cool as you think you are. It, it, it doesn't work well up there. But mm. I didn't change my license plates for eight months, so my ex couldn't find me. Right. So I proudly drove around because I spent eight, 11 years in California, and I loved a lot of it there. So I didn't care. And I had someone at a bar one night say, hey, um, do you want me to like move your car somewhere so no one sees those California plates? <laughs> and I was like... Okay, so uh, that night I started writing this song called Here at Home, and it was literally just about the fact that just because your plates say you're from somewhere doesn't mean that's where you're from, because I'm born and raised in Minnesota for 22 years of my life. Right. So all of my roots are from Minnesota, basically. Betcha. That's right, you're a Vikings fan. I am a Vikings and fan. And your man is not. He He's is a Green Bay fan. Green Bay Packers fan. That's right, I, I've seen the picture. Mm -hmm. We in this house are... Um, I found out we're house divided. I thought we were a 49er house. Until the Super Bowl, turns out some people in this house like the Kansas City Chiefs because my sister-in-law and her husband live in Kansas City, Missouri. They used to live near Kansas City, Kansas yeah. City. And I was just like, why are you rooting for the Chiefs? We have nothing in this house that says Chiefs yeah. at all. Yeah. And so I guess I backed the wrong horse, but oh well. Well, and so the dog, Caesar, mm. he's a Packers fan. <laughs> 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 yep, I, I yeah. couldn't. Uh, Bella's got her Vikings bandana. He has a Packers. Nice. Um, well, my wife and child were just like, it, it got to the point of the Super Bowl. They're like, I, let me know if they win, and they they walked. They they couldn't watch because it was just so. We're like, oh! I digress. Sorry. Uh, uh, from from favorite show memory, let's talk. Uh, you have a favorite venue that you've played, or even just that you've seen live music at anywhere. I know, it's a yeah, copy. I know. Well, okay, Radio Brewing out in Kellogg, Idaho. Okay. They make me play a full hour of just original music. They make you play? <laughs> yes, they because they have, you know, it. it they want to promote original right. artists. So oh, it's not it, because they're afraid of ASCAP or BMI? No, or... it's a, you're doing one hour so people can hear you. and it, That's actually really cool. And it's one of those venues where everybody sits and yes. listens and claps and and they come up and they were actually paying attention. And like that was saying about so that here at home yeah. song. Mm -hmm. I've had numerous people who have moved to Idaho from California that have come up and shaken my hand yeah. after. Yeah. And she's I've had a lady, I was in tears when you sang that song because I miss home. And, you know, and she was, it reminded me of all of our memories of moving up here. And she was, I just love that song. So, you know, it's. That's how you make fans. Yes. yes. Yeah. When people come crying to you afterwards yes, about exactly. one of your original <laughs> songs, that's, that's yeah. how you know you're on um, your path. Hi. Wow. So it, you get yelled at if you try to slip the cover in there? <laughs> no, because after the second set, then it's, oh, okay. yeah, the second set will be cover, you know, but this is uh -huh. the first one is original, but like that 307 bar and grill I played at, like that one awesome crowd. Um, yeah. It's really hard. I've played so many venues. I'm literally trying to just... Have you had this happen, getting back to like people who are actually listening, have you had it happen where everybody's just silent yep. and they're staring at you and you think, oh God, I'm bombing or they're just waiting for me to be done. And then they applaud really, mm -hmm. really loud. And you're like, oh, you're just being polite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to that. Well, and it's funny because some people don't know if they should look at you or not look mm -hmm. at you. So you are like, nobody's looking at me. And then I'm like... Mm. I spend an hour getting ready for these gigs, yeah, and, I always, and I'm if, like, if I'm enjoying some music, I try to be loud about it and be like, you know, yeah, woo, or you know, yeah. I try to let them know. And, and I, if somebody's with me, that's kind of like, you're supposed to. I'm like, they love that. I actually, I did stuff. play, I did play at Moon Time before I left in Coeur d'Alene, and there was a guy sitting at the bar, and after every song, and in between, even during the song, he'd be like, woohoo! And I'm, I was up on stage, and he had random like different noises he was making. And I was like, I need to hire you to come on tour with me. Sounds but, like he's watching a game or something. <laughs> but he was he was like woohooing the music, and I was like, this is you're my hype man. Yeah, I it's, said that that, it's, that is what gets us going. When you are dancing, if you're listening, if you're you know, I love all the of first, that. If the interact, we love the yeah. interaction. Feel free to banter with us. I, I love people coming up and saying some random shit while I'm on stage because mm -hmm. that just opened it up for me. And I have the microphone. Yeah. I'm really good at embarrassing people. I love it. It's like the wedding singer. I have the microphone and I can do whatever I, do I whatever want. I do whatever I want. It's the two hours yeah. a night I can do whatever I want. There's a club here inside um, 
uh, the Rio ho Hotel Casino called uh, Club 172. And uh, I've done a few videos from that place. And one of my favorite memories is everybody's around the dance floor, yeah. really enjoying this band. And the lead singer for the headlining band is standing there with his phone. And I'm behind him getting a picture of his phone, getting a picture of the Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, see, the, you guys should be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or I've got another one where um, I, w I was uh, uh, fronting an indie rock band. And this, uh, this bar, uh, the hard hat, they had a bus they converted into a stage. Yeah. Which was cool and all, except it was kind of sketchy. And if you weren't careful, you were going to fall. But um, I remember there was a band playing, and my band had already played. And for whatever reason, everybody was literally like um, take, take like a parking lot you know, yeah. at a bar. Half of that was taken up by the bus. The other half, everybody was along the edge of the fence for some reason. <laughs> and so I just fuck it, took my chair, sat right in front of the stage, and just sat there and watched and enjoyed. Let nice. them know I'm paying attention. Yeah. And somebody's got a picture of the back of me, and it looks hilarious because <laughs> there's the band rocking out, and there's one guy. <laughs> We want to thank Kevin for coming out. <laughs> I always try to like make that effort too. If I'm watching a band or watching a solo artist to go throw something in their tip jar, kind of like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, it's like going to a strip club. Yeah. You tip, you tip, yeah. you know, and it's like people are up there on stage and putting on a performance. And I don't care if you're up there dancing in your underwear or you're up there singing your own song or you're up there doing a silent mime thing when people are performing mm -hmm. and if you appreciate their art you just throw a dollar you know it, it just just walk by if you if you like what they're doing show a little love right and if you don't you have know? any cash on you there are cheap shots you can buy that they'll be happy to drink <laughs> <laughs> or i don't know buy some merch right yeah we take yeah. credit cards most of us independent <laughs> artists know how to take credit cards now nowadays cash, cash app, app venmo paypal, PayPal. zell so, square and yes. you don't even need the square reader. I just found that out. You just can type in somebody's credit card. Actually, yeah, that's true. Because I had my square reader in a merch bag and it wasn't mm -hmm. in my purse and needed it. And the, the square reader always seems to me like that. Yeah, nothing's gonna break. <laughs> I'm always afraid of that too. Yeah. I'm like, you're just hanging off the end of my phone. The only reason to really have it is speeds up transactions. <laughs> Last thing about shows: is there a dream show you want to play or a dream? <laughs> Tour or Super Bowl halftime show, the Grammy hey, Awards. Um, yeah, no, anything big. I, I want to, oh, sure. Red Rock, Colorado, Red Rock Amphitheater. You want that moment where uh, Aerosmith says, six, hey, welcome. Yes, yeah, no, I want that. I want that 60 to 100,000 fan audience yeah. one time. I played you know? to a thousand people and it was amazing. Yeah. Just that. They were high school kids, so it wasn't quite the same. Yeah. It, it was that, it was, it was at their high school, so they were just like, Oh, cool band. Yeah. <laughs> but still. I've played to some big crowds and, some, you know, TV shows and things like that. But, I mean, I want to have that. I have a band I'm putting together right now. I told you that they were mm -hmm. they're rehearsing. My band is amazing. They're rehearsing while I'm on tour to keep the momentum going. So, you guys are amazing. I haven't even met my guitarist yet. <laughs> uh, like when I get memories. <laughs> yeah. When I get home, I'll meet him and we'll figure the whole show out. But, um yeah, I want to have the full band. I don't want to be playing the guitar. I want to just be singing, dancing around, hitting people's high fives along the front row. You know, right. like that vibe. I want that. Yeah. It's actually why I, I set out. I think I want to try singing in a jazz band because I'm just singing. Yeah. I'm putting everything down. I'm not mm -hmm. painting, stepping on pedals and stuff. Um, say hi to my mother-in-law. Hi, hi. mother-in-law. Hi. <laughs> No, you don't. You don't deserve treats, Carolyn. <laughs> oh, the dog for the dog. Okay, we're gonna take a quick treat break. We're back. Everybody got their treats. Yay! <laughs> My dogs do not have theirs yet. They're sitting in the RV. <laughs> last, last, last section here. Let's talk about gear. Uh, what are you currently rocking? So we'll have a um, Behringer PA that okay. I've had for 10 years since I started my open mics. Well, actually, it's my second PA because someone burned one out at my open mic. Another reason I don't do open mics anymore. Yeah. Um, I have a uh, speaker tower from Guitar Center. It's the knockoff Harbinger brand that's half the price of Bose. I, super, I, super lightweight because yeah. I carry all my gear, 90% of my gigs, you know, especially when I'm touring. Uh, I've got two suitcases. One suitcase has all the cords, the lights, everything. And then the other one is my merch suit, uh, suitcase. And then I've got guitar stand, mic stand, 
and my Ibanez African Tiger Wood guitar that everybody loves. Ooh, sounds great. Are you playing that today? Mm hmm. Cool. Um, so, you, did you say pedals? No pedals. No pedals at all? No. Not even an EQ or tuner? I would love to know how to loop tuner? pedals. No, I've got a tuner. Got a, yeah, but just a guitar tuner. No, I oh, okay. have no... That's right. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm old school. I have a tuning fork. <laughs> yeah, I used to use the little thing you blow into, you know, one yeah, of those. But yeah, I'm, no, I'm... I say that. I, I have a guitar. I, I have the, a tuner pedal as well. I've got the good one on top, and then my capo. I'd be lost without mm -hmm. my capo, because I capo all over the board. Okay. So... Have you ever... Or uh, any dream gear you're hoping to get? Bose speaker tower, a sound right. man. Um, <laughs> no one ever says the sound guy as the gear. It's true. I would, I would love a full time sound man that yeah. goes along with the Bose. You'd love to be able to afford a full time sound yes, person. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I have, I have one or two I could recommend from here, but I don't know if they want to like uproot and just travel with you. <laughs> yeah, right. And my own band was like, well, I don't know if we're going to tour. And I'm like, well, when I have the bus one day that shows up and says you and your wife are coming, you guys can make the decision then. Nice. <laughs> so the band is, is it just going to be called Pamela Jean? It's Pamela Jean. Yeah. Right. And then I'll do like, it'll be like Pamela Jean band when mm -hmm. it's the band. So people will know if it's me as a solo artist or if it's going to be the band. Cause Don't do that my, mistake. Yeah. Uh, we have, it's very different. Me as a solo artist is a lot of my original music, mm -hmm. lots of country, lots of classic rock. When it's with the band, we are doing primarily classic rock, mm -hmm. 80s rock, um, the stuff that I can't play and rock out at the same time. Right. When I get to put my guitar down and we can do Pat Benatar and Stevie Nicks and the do what changes. my voice yeah. actually can do, mm -hmm. which I, it's very hard to do when you're standing there and you cannot move because your microphone's here and your guitar is here. As a solo artist, when you're plugged in, you know, people are like, well, you were standing too still tonight. Well, you get up and try yeah. to perform and move and not pull your cable out and then get back to the microphone. It's it's very hard putting on a show yeah. as a solo artist. But if you like that dynamic of singer-songwriter, that's what I do as a you solo artist. You should come see the band. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. for the band, we're going to be very lively, very upbeat. Um, you know, obviously a few slow songs here and there, but right. it's going to be primarily rock with a little bit of country because my bass player is amazing and he hates country so i'm going easy on wow. him wow going easy on him good on and my, my, it out my producer this. hates country too which is even more funny because he records in nashville with all country <laughs> players but um i don't like country i can't stand western yeah <laughs> oh lose brothers joke there, but right? I, my <laughs> producer referred to me as earthy pop so that's Thank you that is what he <laughs> Called my music. I I've been learning to sort of tell people it's more like Cheryl Crow. Yes. The minute you say country, the minute they see a cowgirl hat on you, e either they love you or they don't want to even listen to your music. There's no in the middle ground. So I just tell right. people I'm like Cheryl Crow. I'm a singer songwriter. Check my music out. The funny thing is, I've had multiple like metal and hard rock bands in here where one member at least was wearing a cowboy hat. Generally, it was black. Yeah. But still, it's a hard on cowboy hat. It's curled up. Yeah. And it's like kind of that wicker rattan type of hat. And I'm just, and, and you were definitely not playing country. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last question uh, of the, the gear section. From the, the highs of dream gear to the lows of any lost gear stories. Have you ever lose gear? I haven't lost gear, but per yeah. se, like that PA I was just talking about, I had a PA that when I first started running the open mics, because I had to have the whole setup, and I actually had a friend lend me the money to buy it, because it was $500 for the whole setup, and she says, I know you're going to make money doing this, so every gig you play, you pay me half of what you made. Oh, So, nice. uh, yeah, my friend Cece, and I've lost touch with her, and I wish I could find her, so Cece, if you're out there, I miss your face. But it was really great, and um, that PA, I was running my open mics, and no offense, sometimes as a female, men think they have to come help you without asking yep. first. And I don't mind when people come ask, do you need a hand? Because nine times out of ten, I probably do, mm -hmm. especially today we're hooking up my trailer. Yep. I was not able to do that by myself today, and thank God there was retired friendly people in the RV park. But um, there have been numerous men that will come up and say, this sound doesn't sound right. And they oh, want to they want to turn all your buttons. Oh. And I'm like, why don't you just come talk to me and say, do you mind if I show you something? And yeah. I will always say yes if you present it that way. But some guy didn't like the way it sounded while he was on stage. He started pulling cords out and I all of a sudden smelled something burning. 
And I was like, what the fuck is going on up here? So I go around and my PA is smoking. So I'm like, okay, so that PA got burned out because somebody didn't like it, you know. Um, it, but other than that, I've really wow. been very, <laughs> very, very lucky with equipment. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> guitar still... picks. Guitar picks. I'm always losing guitar picks. My right. favorite ones are always lost. The grippy ones. The you grippy know? ones. The medium grippy ones. Yeah. All right. Um, last question. You made it. Yay. <laughs> if you were talking to a new musician who wanted to do what you do, what would you say? What was your one piece of advice? And, mm. you know, don't say, like, change your strings and, you know. No, I would just honestly say if you believe in yourself... And people like what you do. Go for it. Do not worry about money. It will come. Do not worry about uh, traveling by yourself. You'll figure it out as you go. Um, oh, my God. Uh, set up funds like GoFundMe. It'll find people. I found six sponsors for this tour. Which, by the way, let me blast them out. Blue Dog RV, CJ at As Is RV, Quarter Design, Lady Pearl's Art of All Media, Happy Toes and Nails, which I haven't put on yet because I was busy digging under my vehicle and my rig today, Gila Mountain RV Resort. So those are my sponsors for this tour. But find people that believe in you because you will not even believe the amount of help when you have friends and family. I'm not even going to say family. Your family really doesn't want you doing this, most likely. <laughs> let's let's just put it out there. You should get a real yeah. job and work nine to five we until the day you die. Without, don't do anything yeah. fun with your life so you have health insurance. No, don't worry about any of that. Um, I have had this dream since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm turning 40 next month. Mm -hmm. And I... Welcome. Yeah, here we go. Over the hump. But uh, it was my biggest dream to be a touring musician and make this happen. And uh, I got the RV, I got the rig to tow it, um, I've got it all set up as a tour bus, and I, I just, I haven't stopped. Just don't stop. Like, you can't stop, you can't rest, you can't take a break. It's 24-7, and you got to be dedicated to it, and you have to just go for it at all costs. Definitely. Uh, and with that, Chloe and Alexa are reminding me <laughs> that uh, she's got to get going, she's got a show tonight, so we're going to get a couple songs from her in front of the guitar wall, but in the meantime... Thank you for coming. Thank you Thank for you having for watching. me. Thanks, no Vegas. I always love being here in the desert. And we'll see you upstairs in room six. Say bye. 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 For now. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to do a little song for you called Slip Away. It's about drinking wine in the bathtub after a long, hard day. I feel this world is pushing me. Could be someone who's just not real And behind these open doors One day we'll come all shine as bright as the sun And walk away from it all From it all
So this is my four more legs song. It's not finished yet. It's been writing itself as I've been traveling with the dogs. So here it is. So I hope you like the start to the Four More Legs Tour. Yeah! <laughs> come on. Caesar, come on. Quick little B-roll here. We are in Pamela Jean's moving home, <laughs> traveling home here with uh, her two bodyguards. So hi. hi guys. So this is Caesar. These are their bandanas that were donated mm -hmm. from Quarter Design. Oh, very cool. Company and designed mm -hmm. by Tanya, Lady Pearl's Art of All Media. I see Caesar this is on his Vikings this blanket. This is my angel. Yeah, Bella, this is her Vikings blanket. Um, mommy's not happy right now. If you guys want to really know the truth behind the tour on, on top of the RV and all this shit. Mm. Uh, I just came in. I had this thing pulled because this is the room and it used to look all nice with decorative pillows. Um, Caesar broke this. through this thing. And pissed all over my bed while I've been in on room six interview. So now I have no laundry facilities where I'm staying tonight. I have another pillow down. I've already thrown one out. And um, you yeah. see that? See that right there? See that pillow? See this? That's piss? you. Yeah. Hang so your and, head in shame. And my brand new blanket that Mike's mom gave me. So. Um, but on the plus side, you have the universe in here. I do. My girlfriend Tanya painted these for me. Very cute. So, I like it. Yeah, this is my tour bus. You know what? It, and, I like the setup. It's actually pretty cool. And it's not always glamorous being a traveling rock star because your dogs pee on things and your <laughs> RV doesn't work properly and shame. Shit hits the fan, but hey. Hey, just be glad it wasn't that. Yeah. <laughs> but yep, we are. Um, All right. We're live from Las Vegas, and That's I, right. I love my four more legs, even though he's mm. pissing me off today. But you got a show to get to, young lady. I do. So we're coming out to Lake Mead. Woo! Woot. One of my favorite things to do in Las Vegas is hang out go. at the lake. All right. Well, we are going to say goodbye. Bye. And Bye, thank fabulous Las Vegas. Thanks for coming on the show. All right. Okay, thank you. And now return you to your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> I want to thank Pamela Jean for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. If you want to check out more of what Pamela Jean's got going on, check the descriptions down below. If you want to check her out on YouTube, click over here. If you want to subscribe to this channel, please click here. And don't forget to ring that bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Thank you, Las Vegas. It's good to be back. Bye. 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 <laughs>